Module 8. Image. 8A. Read. B. Can you guess what photo manipulation is? Read the text quickly without paying attention to the missing sentences and check your answers. Don't believe everything you see. It is well known that most photographs of models and celebrities are an unrealistic portrayal of beauty. This is because many of the images have been edited using digital manipulation. Using computer software like Photoshop is so common that the word Photoshop has even entered dictionaries as a verb. The pressure to conform to what the media shows to be beautiful influences people's psychology negatively. You may think that the manipulation of photographs all began with the development of computer software, but photo manipulation is almost as old as photography itself. What you are actually seeing is a photo of the politician John Calhoun with the president's head stuck on it. These early photos were usually changed using ink, paint and airbrushes. But when photo editing software was invented, photo manipulation really took off. Recent developments have even made it possible to digitally edit moving pictures, making actors in a scene thinner, taller, fatter or smaller. Obviously, making people look slimmer by 10 kilos or making their eyes bigger to improve their looks is bending the truth too much. But how about changing the background to suit the colour of a dress? Or changing the colour of a model's eyes or hair? Is this acceptable? What about making a model's skin slightly smoother? The point is that everyone has their own opinion about when photo manipulation gets out of hand. It is important to understand the effect photo manipulation has on people, especially young people. It's harmless enough when girls have their hair cut like a famous actress, but having plastic surgery to change the shape of their nose or to make their lips bigger is more serious. The results are permanent and health risks are high. In some countries, a shocking 50% of girls from 16 to 21 have considered having plastic surgery to become better looking. However, these girls don't realise that they want to look like someone that isn't actually real. Some celebrities have started to rebel against photoshopping and have posted pictures of themselves on the internet so that people can see how much digital manipulation of photography is happening in the media. In the UK, the British Girl Guide Association has asked for all photoshopped images to be clearly labelled. Perhaps this way they will realise how fake the media's idea of beauty and perfection is and appreciate more genuine qualities in themselves. Listen. Listen to five people talking about clothes and appearance and match the speakers 1 to 5 with the statements A to F. There is one extra statement which you do not need to use. Speaker 1. Two weeks ago, I went shopping with my sister. She wanted to buy a pair of jeans and I needed a new dress for the end of school party. I usually borrow something from her, but this year I really wanted to make a fashion statement. We spent ages looking around until we settled on two dresses, a black one and a red one. My sister was insisting that I buy the red one, but I wasn't so sure. Anyway, luckily for me, I chose the black one, because at the party there were about six girls all wearing the same red dress. They felt silly, and I looked great. Speaker 2 I was out clothes shopping with my brother last Saturday when he suddenly decided his hair was too long. So, we popped into a hairdresser's and he got the shortest haircut you have ever seen. Something close to a buzz cut. But, to be honest, he looked pretty cool. Then I had a flash of madness and wanted to do the same. But just at the last minute, I changed my mind. 
I think you need to be really slim to look good with that kind of haircut. Anyway, when we got home, my brother had to listen to a whole evening with my parents shouting at him about how silly he was to get such a short haircut. Thankfully, it was only him they were shouting at. Speaker 3 I'd sort of realised I had a problem a few months ago. I bought a pair of jeans, but I had to buy them a size bigger than usual because they didn't fit. Then, a few weeks later, I tried the same jeans on and they were really tight again. There was only one answer for it. I stopped eating cakes and sweets and drinking all those soft drinks which are full of sugar. I even started using my brother's treadmill. Within a few weeks, I could easily fit into those jeans, but I didn't stop there. I lost lots of weight and now I look and feel like a new person. I recommend it to everyone. Speaker 4 I like to keep up with the trends and some people say I'm a fashion victim. I change my hairstyle a lot and if something isn't in fashion, I never wear it. My mum shouts at me because I spend all my money on clothes, but that's what I'm passionate about. What can I do? The only time I did go a bit too far was when I saw my favourite pop star wearing a blue outfit. She looked so cool. So, the next day I went shopping and got loads of items that were blue. I have to admit that it was a bit silly because most of the things stayed in my wardrobe, never to see the light of day. Speaker 5 I've never been interested in fashion. I usually wear casual clothes, you know, tracksuits, t-shirts, that sort of thing. And just because there was a school party coming up, why should I change? But my friend is the opposite of me and he suggested I improve my image, just for one evening. I tried to argue with him but it was hopeless. In the end, he offered to lend me one of his trendy shirts, so I accepted. I had a really great time at the party, but I don't think it had anything to do with the shirt. My friend rang me up a month later and told me to keep the shirt, since I liked it so much. But in reality, I'd forgotten all about it. It was under a pile of clothes in my room somewhere. 8b. Read. B. Read the text quickly and answer the question. Choose A, B, C or D. What is the purpose of this text? Installation Art Think of the last time you visited an art gallery. Did any of the following cross your mind? If only art weren't so boring. I wish I hadn't come here. Paintings, paintings. If only artists would create something more exciting. Well, times are changing. A growing number of artists have chosen to challenge the traditional concept of art. They believe that artists should be permitted to express their creativity in any way they please and they should have the opportunity to exhibit their works in all environments. This desire for artistic freedom gave rise to a form of art called installation art, which first became popular in the late 1960s. The primary goal of installation art is to change the viewer's perception of space by transforming the ordinary into something quite extraordinary. Installation artists use a wide range of materials to create their works, from sticks and foam to chairs and cars, but they also reject the traditional idea that art is only visual, and people who experience their artworks often have to use a variety of senses like hearing, touch and smell. In 2003, in the main hall of the Tate Modern in London, artist Oliver Eliasson installed a glowing sun and an enormous mirror on the ceiling. The room was also filled with a mist made of sugar and water. The installation was called The Weather Project, and if you had visited the Tate Modern at the time, you would have seen many visitors lying on the floor and looking up at their reflections on the ceiling. Sometimes, artists are asked to stage their installations in public areas. These are known as public art. The traffic light tree, in 1998, by French sculptor Pierre Vivant, is a famous example. This unusual tree-like structure stands 8 metres tall and features 75 sets of blinking traffic lights. The tree is situated in Canary Wharf, one of London's main financial centres, 
and its flashing lights are intended to represent the energy and rhythms of the surrounding area. Installation artists often use their works of art to convey a message. In 2009, Brazilian artist Nele Azeviado created an installation called Melting Men. The aim of the installation was to draw attention to the destructive impact of global warming on our environment. Melting Men consisted of a thousand little men made of ice, which Azeviado placed sitting on the steps of a Berlin concert hall, only to be turned into a puddle a while later, their rapid disappearance serving as a warning to humanity. The Melting Men installation has since been exhibited in a number of cities, including Paris, Florence, Havana, and Sao Paulo. Since 2006, anonymous artists in Melbourne, Australia, have been delighting the locals with their imaginative crate man installations. As the name implies, crate men are figures made entirely from brightly coloured milk crates. These comical creations have appeared at various locations across the city. One was found fishing beside a creek, another was discovered climbing a fence, and one particularly impressive installation featured two crate men climbing a skyscraper. Like it or hate it, installation art is here to stay and will no doubt continue to surprise and entertain us for years to come. Listen. Listen to a conversation between a man and a woman, Glenn and Jane, at an art gallery and read the statements. Write T for true or F for false. So, did you like that last work of art? Work of art? You call the lights going on and off in an empty room art? Didn't it make you feel differently about the world? What? The only thing it made me feel like was a fool for buying a ticket to this place. I could have been doing something much more exciting. Come on, you enjoyed the paintings in the first room. Some of them are OK, I suppose, but the rest of these... What did you call them? Installation art. Yeah, I just can't see the point. I think you have to be very intelligent to think of all of these ideas. I wish I had that much creativity. Now, let's take this painting here. What is it? It's just a curly fuchsia line on a red background. I could have made that. You used to be good at art in secondary school, I remember. What happened? Nothing, really. I just got bored of it. I didn't want to study art like you did. I'm surprised I didn't give up on art in my final year at school. Did you ever have Mr McManus for art? No, but I heard he was pretty strict. He shouted at me once so much that he made me cry. If only I hadn't dropped those paints. Poor you. Is that why you never turned into a famous artist, do you think? Perhaps. Hey, look at that tiny colourful picture over there. How much is it worth? I think that one was bought in an auction last month, actually, for about a million euros. What? Then maybe you're right. These artists must be very clever if they can get people to pay silly amounts of money for any old rubbish. You're right. That is a bit too much. But you can't call everything rubbish. Come on, let's go and get some lunch. Not yet. What about the gift shop? But you never buy anything. I know, but I'd like to have a look. OK, it's my dad's birthday soon. I'll get him a poster or something. Yeah, he'll like that. Listen. You will hear people talking in five different situations. For questions one to five, choose the picture which answers the question correctly. One. We've been walking around the city all afternoon. Where's this famous statue of the king? It must be around here somewhere. I wish we hadn't forgotten our guidebook. Maybe that's it over there. Let's go and have a closer look. Don't statues of kings usually show them on horses or something? You know, running off into battle. Maybe this king didn't like horses. Here we are. What does it say? Well, it's not the king. It's a famous scientist. I think that's the science museum over there. So it makes sense to have him standing nearby. Yeah. Anyway, where are we off to next? 2. What do you think of this sculpture? Ooh, that is lovely, isn't it? Yes, I really like the colours. Me too. It makes you feel like you're in a garden, don't you think? 
Definitely. And it wouldn't be the same if it were in a gallery. No, I don't think it would be as powerful. I just hope people don't ruin it by spraying graffiti on it or something. Yes, this is quite a busy street. They should have put it in the park or something. Perhaps, yes. 3. Here, check out these photographs from my trip to New York. Wow, they're really nice. You're very talented. My sister took them. She's the photographer in the family. Is that the Empire State Building? Yep, and that is the MoMA. The what? The Museum of Modern Art. It's full of amazing paintings by famous artists. I'd love to go there. You'd really like it. Hey, would you like a biscuit? Sure, that's a nice bowl. Did you get it in New York? No, I made it. I took a course last summer and we made loads of interesting things out of clay. Really? I love the colours and patterns you've made. Well done. Thanks. 4. Hey Sue, what do you think of my picture? Wow, that's really good. I didn't know you were an artist. Well... Have you been on a course or something? Not exactly. I used to do pencil sketches and drawings at school, but I always found painting too difficult. What did you use on this? Watercolours or oil paints? Neither. What then? I can't lie to you. I scanned an old photograph and edited it with some new software I bought. It took about ten seconds. You cheat! Still, it looks very good. I know. I'm going to try and work on some other pictures. 5. So, what do you think of my new room? Pretty cool. I love the turquoise chair. Where did you get it? From a shop on the high street. It came in loads of colours. Red, green, black. I think you made the right choice. But you need some curtains in here. Yeah, they had some nice ones in the same shop, but they were beige. Beige? I don't think so. They won't match the rest of your room. I'm going to paint my walls light blue, I think. That's a nice idea. So you need blue curtains? I could get turquoise ones to match my chair, but I like dark curtains, really. Navy blue is a nice colour. Oh, yes. Then they would match my new rug. Look. That's decided, then. Now, what about some new posters?